<laughs> oh, really tough. This is going to be my most censored episode. This fish and I have traveled over 1,200 miles together. What is up everybody and welcome to today's video. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Zach. This is SC Fishkeeping. I appreciate you stopping by. Please hit that subscribe button down below if you have not already and as always a very special thank you to all of my members tuning in. Now behind me, you will officially see the strangest way you could ever pack a car for a road trip. That's coolers and totes and air pumps and all kinds of goodies. But by the end of today's video, each and every one of those is going to be full of really cool, really big fish. But we got all this stuff packed up back here. I got the fancy button. Impressive, I know. But we're only missing one thing. Doesn't make you seem vain at all. Because you bring your own lighting? Yes. I'm filming, so. This guy, this is the last thing that we need uh, for today's trip. And are you going blind yet? Not yet. What time is it, is it? It is 6.17 in the morning. It is 3.20 a.m., so it's very early. Yes. <laughs> but uh, what are we going to do? We're going to go get fish. And like, I already kind of showed them like a lot of fish. Yeah. A lot of fish, a lot of big fish. And it's like, what, a four hour drive? Yes. We should do that. Four hour drive, 15 miles south of the Minnesota border. This drive is brought to you by Monster. And Monster Java. Because we drink it, but. By the gallons. They're not paying us for it. They should be. Let's go. Yep. This is the main source of fish that we are taking from uh, this. It's actually a former fish rescue and they are uh, shutting it down. So they don't want the fish anymore. They just wanted to make sure that they're going to a good home. Uh, Joe is actually friends with the couple that, that lives here and they reached out to him, he reached out to me. So now you're kind of all caught up on where we're at. But this is a 1200 gallon pool pond and it has some really big fish. You can hear uh, Joe bringing the boxes down. Okay. So we got all kinds of storage totes and stuff and we're going to kind of just transfer some of the water over and start getting them out but uh, I'm excited to show you the fish because there's some fish that I've never had on the channel and uh, some fish that I'm just kind of excited to own so yeah I think we're ready to start uh, filling up these coolers and then you just had to have some stairs. Seeing monsters at your window, no you can't sleep, you pretend though. Use the pump. Damn. Big spot of silver. Meanwhile, I sit here and film and stay dry. Oh, no. <laughs> Come on, Joe, you gotta be ready when I get to assist. Teamwork. 
This one? Yep. In. Yeah, that one took the net out. <laughs> I think you call that an alley-oop? Yeah. That was good. You can throw that one in there if you got that yeah, out. Yeah, that was good. good. Quick update. We have two nets. Oh, that should help. It's not one. <laughs> <laughs> and one net broke. That's why you, you don't swim into the milk crate. <laughs> Guess what? Got the last plank All right, we got him. Did you hand catch that? Yes. You yeah. beast. And you, you beast. You missed it. Oh, well, I was more impressed with what we you had. Do that. He likes kisses. What's right. this? What's this one? Mr. Spiky, spiky little, little spiky little fish. That hurt. No, I believe it. <laughs> All right, shut this down. Mm -hmm. Ow, Right. <laughs> this is going to be my most censored episode. <laughs> Here go, we're All right, so I'm officially trying to stay out of the way. I feel I've been less than helpful. <laughs> but uh, so we have all the fish are out of the pond. There's one more kind of special fish upstairs that I'll show you when we get, get it back home. But we got all the fish in the totes. Uh, we're just gonna kind of get them all hooked up. Uh, we're actually probably just lugged upstairs and then put some air pumps on them and stuff. And I guess we'll just pick this up when we do that. Your seatbelt's on buckled. Oh, You're beeping. Actually, mine is too. But anyway, uh -huh. we're uh, we're loaded up. Uh, we have I don't even know how many fish did we get. Ten. One, two, three. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. But now we just have a four hour drive back and hope we don't splash all over the back of the car. And then uh, we'll start unloading and I'll actually show you what we got. So, ready to drive? Yeah. Let's do it. All right, so we're back home and I thought it would be fun to just point out that I have created a little bit of a swimming pool in the back of my car here. But the fish are here. We've been checking on them as we've made the four hour drive back. And now we just need to get them uh, into there. Get a picture of the puddle. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, nice little pool. Uh, can we throw a fish in there and it'll be the world's first Acadia pond? Okay. Yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah. All right, so it's been about 30, 45 minutes since we got all the fish and all the different uh, containers downstairs. What we've been doing is slowly taking water from uh, the different tanks and ponds that all these fish are going in, adding it to their coolers, giving them time to adjust to the temperature. I mean, that's just called acclimation. I think we're about to get splashed, probably, right? Yeah, dude. I mean, you're probably about to get splashed. No, it's been the thing for the day. So. It has been. <laughs> so we're going to move some of these fish in, and then I'll show you every single thing that we got. So. Really? Now, I got wet. So this guy here is a big uh, iridescent shark. We've seen better days. He's a little beat up, but uh, once he gets in the pond, we'll, we'll oh, treat he'll, him. He'll heal himself up, and I mean, iridescent sharks are really spooky to move anyway. They're yeah. Really he's, spastic. He's a very... Let's try and do it. Very bouncy. As quickly as possible, as low impact as possible. Yeah, man. You're out of breath. I'm old and fat, so yeah. <laughs> Is that a big sail fin? Yeah, it's a big spotted sail fin. They're cool fish. Yeah, you know, they're definitely, I mean, the Pucos and the Armored Captors are definitely really cool. That's the biggest one I've ever seen. A little beat up on the fins, but nothing. Oh, I mean. Or fish that have been netted, I mean, it's to be expected a little bit. Yeah. Everything is now in its new temporary home. And I say temporary home because there's two things that I want you to keep in mind as I show you all the fish that we picked up today. And the first one is things are a little crowded. This was kind of a time sensitive pickup for these fish. So I'm making do with what I have, but I actually have a larger pond showing up here in just a couple of days. So these fish will be spread out and uh, the tanks won't uh, look so crowded. So keep that in mind. I know things are a little crowded. The second thing is moving fish is hard. From one aquarium to another is hard. Now add in a four and a half hour drive in coolers and big fish and it gets harder. So some of these fish got a little beat up in transport or, or kind of being scooped up out of that pond. So some of them are looking a little rough, but every single fish is doing 
well and this just gives me a chance to kind of heal them up and then give you guys an update in a little bit so keep that in mind some fish are going to look a little beat up from the transport but everyone has settled in fine but let me show you what we got the first batch of fish ended up right here in this 700 gallon pool pond this originally housed my two hybrid catfish gus and chunk i had moved a marble achara from that tank into here as well as this little red belly paku. Now today, one of the fish I'm most excited about is this guy. This is just a regular tiger shovel nose catfish. He is about two feet, uh, almost two and a half feet long. Now, one of the most beat up fish is this almost three foot long iridescent shark. He has settled in extremely well, but I mean, it's kind of hard to tell, but you can see he got beat up in the transport. So we're gonna get him healed up. There is also a black Paku. And that guy is big, but he's been hanging out with my, my buddy. And then you kind of saw the big Plecos going in. There's one there and the other is up along there. And then the last fish that got added in here, and this guy is still kind of settling in here. There, it's kind of hard to tell, but that is actually a Dovi. And this guy, if you don't know what a dovi is, he can be really mean. So I'm gonna have to figure out something to do with him because I don't want him beating up on any of my catfish. So that's the first tank. The other spot where I put the fish are right here behind me in this 180 gallon aquarium. This actually houses some of the fish that got a little bit more beat up. And what that's gonna let me do is treat this tank a little bit easier than treating the big pond and uh, kind of get them healed up and then figure out if I wanna leave them in here if we're gonna put them in the new bigger pond that's coming or even in that uh, 300 gallon stock tank with the uh, albino Chinese well. So I have some options, but I'm really excited about some of the fish in here once we can get them healed up. So there are a few fish I already had in this tank. This red devil Midas was already in here. This uh, Wallago that I absolutely love, he was already in there. My Florida Gar was already in there. And then I do actually already have a tiger shovel nose that is one of the most deformed fish on the entirety of the uh, planet earth but we added a couple cichlids and i haven't had like some really cool cichlids in a while that guy right there is a green texas cichlid and his colors are beautiful but you can see he's a little beat up on the sides there there's another iridescent shark and this guy is in rough shape but has settled in and is very active so i'm pretty confident with some medicine we can heal him up but you can see he's a little rough there's also a Vieja, and I will put the specific type of Vieja right here on the screen. His color should really pop after he settles in. And then underneath him there is a chocolate cichlid, at least that's my guess, is a chocolate cichlid. And one of the fish I am most excited about is this big guy right here. This beautiful clown knife, but you can see, you know, his fins are a little beat up as well. But he's settling in and we will get him healed up. And then that big sailfin pleco is uh, back there just hanging onto the glass. That is every fish Joe and I picked up today except one, which I'll show you in a second. But I'm curious, which of the fish that I just showed you are you most excited to kind of see more content on, uh, see me heal them up, or just kind of learn more about? Let me know down in the comments which fish you want me to kind of focus on in a future video, or just say all of them but I'm really loving all the activity in this pond and I'm really excited to get them into something bigger so that way we can really display their size and uh, yeah, they just need some more room. But let me show you one more thing. This fish and I have traveled over 1200 miles together through three different homes. Yeah, and yeah. it started with who? I mean, it was, it was your fish, right? No, it originally started off as a rescue that I had taken to the Ohio Fish Rescue. Okay and then I adopted from there, from Cleveland, and then drove it back to my house here Okay. in Nebraska. And then I had a tank break. I needed an emergency home, so I took her to my friend Brendan, who was in Northern Iowa, where we got all the other fish Yeah, today. So, so he had this fish for probably how long? A year. year or so. And, and then, then now? And now, today, we went and picked her back up and brought her back to your place. So this fish is? Yeah. She's a big Fajaka puffer. Yeah. There she goes.
pretty happy. I mean, she's not really even in stress colors right now. No. She's got a real nice bright yellow belly. And she just kind of gently went down to the bottom, so yeah, you know, it didn't freak out, which means that doing that drip acclimation worked. You can kind of see her, her beak right there. Yeah, I said, yeah, tomorrow or the next day, we'll definitely get down to the, get down to the fish shop and get her some mystery snails. Gotta get her nice and fattened back up, some clams, some more shrimp. But I think for tonight, we'll just let her Let her adjust and yep. kind of get out of her face. <sighs> All right, well, I'm thoroughly sweaty and yes. covered in tank water, and I think these fish just need to turn off the lights and kind of let them relax and chill. What do you think, Joe? Thorough day of Thorough fish day. hauling? Yes. You ready for bed? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm <laughs> yeah. Ready. I'm ready. We were in the car for 10, probably about 10 hours, including stops. Yeah. So, long day of driving, but I need you guys to do me a favor. Go down to the comments and say thank you to Joe because he's the one that made all this possible. So not only do I get some cool fish and you guys get some uh, cool fish for future content, but these fish um, have a good home. So so thank, thank you to Joe in the comments and then thank you, Joe. Hey, but, uh, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Hit that thumbs up if you did. Comment below. Let me know what you think of all these fish. And as always, uh, you know, remember this is Zach with SC Fish Keeping, reminding you that every fish is a keeper. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you soon. See you soon.